calling the school board meeting back to order. Today is Tuesday, May 29th. We're just returning from an executive session. And we'll start with item number six on the agenda, public comment on agenda items. Does anyone from the public wish to speak on any items on the agenda tonight? If so, please come to the podium and state your name. Uh, Kristen Allen, 34 Woodfield Drive. Um, the only thing I wanted to say is on one of the agenda items, the special election, um, I really feel like we need a break. Um, we've been already at a vote. We're about to have another one. I fear that the school budget is going to take more than one vote to pass. Um, and we need a resting period. Additionally, one of the seats that is up for uh, replacement is going to have basically a two-month window. So I kind of feel like it's a little bit of a waste of resources to have a special election, um, which, from what I understand, can't take place before August. So thank you. Thank you. Michelle DeWest, 11 Foxwell Drive. I also wanted to speak on the special election and ask that we not hold a special election. We hold off until November for similar reasons. Um, I think the cost and the fact that a seat will open up in, two, in just a few months again is just wasteful. I think also, more importantly, I, I, I agree that our town just needs a break. I'll admit, I need a break. I feel like the recall is still a hot button issue. I know it is for me. And I would really like to just have some time to step away from this and um, have a chance to regain some objectivity so that I can fairly assess any candidates that come forward. Um, I think the fact that you know we've lost some really strong talent and a lot of depth of knowledge from our current from our board as part of the recall means that we need to be that much more thoughtful about who we bring on next. And by holding off, that will give us the chance to really thoroughly assess who we bring on next to recompose our Board of Education. And I think that rather than, you know, it, it may seem like putting off the election till November means that we're slowing things down, but I think we can make a lot of progress during this time if we focus on healing. And I think actually it offers a perfect opportunity for potential candidates to step forward during this time and help demonstrate the leadership that we're all looking for. And then we can vote confidently in November based on some demonstrated leadership skill. Thank you. Hi, I'm <clears throat> Deborah Bunce from Four Partridge Lane. And I think I just want to repeat what, what you just said. And, um, so I don't want to repeat it because you just heard it. So I won't say that all over again, but I'm supporting uh, the special election to happen in November. I really think that we want to spend time vetting candidates. We've been through a lot and it's going to take time to understand who's, who's out there, who we have to choose from. And as I said, I won't repeat everything you said, but thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Sneaking in. Jess Libby, uh, 501 Black Point Road. I was going to write something today, but my daughter has chicken pox and it totally threw my entire day off. Um, I listened to the last few people speak and I agree with them 100%. I'm a very active member of our community and I'm exhausted. I'm so tired of fighting. I'm tired of going to my kids' events and seeing people give me dirty looks and feeling like I'm on this side or that side. I just want to break. I want to pass the budget and then I want to take the summer off and make friends with my neighbors again and enjoy living in Scarborough. So I ask that you delay the special election until the fall. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Kristen Nilsson, Morning Street. Um, I think, you know, I, I hear what everybody's saying, and I certainly respect that. I think as board members, you know, you four are in the position that you're in, and I would defer to you as to what you would want to do with the makeup of the board. Thanks. Hi, my name is Megan Powers for Ramsey Terrace. Um, I'm here actually to um, speak to uh, defer the election until November. I just feel that anything before that is just rushing it. Um, the public's just not going to have the opportunity to vet candidates. There's a sp specific group in town that says they have so many candidates but refuse to 
let everybody know who are they. You know, um, summer's a busy time. A lot of people are traveling. So as far as being able to engage myself and um, determine who I would want on the board, I just wouldn't have the opportunity to do that. And I know so many people in town feel that way. Um, and I also feel that you know the budget is we need to focus on that. Um, bringing new people on in the middle of that is just just doesn't seem to make sense. And I know that we have four capable people right now on the board right now that can do it, um, and that can get us through that process. And I think after that, we move ahead and we move forward and we bring Scarborough back to where we are. And I also feel that right now there's so much focus on one school, and that we're forgetting that there are five other schools in this community that need our attention. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else for public comment? Seeing none, we'll close the public comment section of this agenda. 7.0, new business. 7.1, election of the chair of the Board of Education. At this time, I will accept nominations for school board chair. I'd like to nominate Mary Starr as chair of the Board of Education. Second. Are there any other nominations? Hearing none, is there a desire for discussion? Okay. All in favor of Mary Starr as school board chair? Oh, do I vote for myself? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we need you to. Like, oh, that's right, I have to. <laughs> okay, four plus two. That's unanimous. Mary, come on over and take the chair. Congratulations, Mary, on becoming the next board. Okay, uh, moving on to um, item number 7.2, the election of the Vice Chair of the Board of Education. Do I have any nominations? I'll nominate Leanne Casalonis for Vice Chair of the Board of Education. Second. Is anyone going to second that? Oh, I can second She just, oh, I can, oh, I can. Oh, can I second this? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, is there any discussion? No discussion? We'll have a vote. All those in favor of Leanne Kazelnis as vice chair? <laughs> Next order of business, uh, the special election, 7.3. Uh, is there any discussion regarding special election? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Um, do I have a motion? So moved. Second. What are we moving? Special election. To hold a special election. Mm -hmm. oh. I, I thought we had to decide if we were going to have one before we decided. Alright, I'll make the motion that yes, we should have a special election. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? I'm Jackie. Yes, uh, I am not in favor of having a special election at this time. I have checked with the, with the town clerk and there's no time frame that if, if the board decided that they wanted to hold a special election, it would be up to the town council to set that date. And then people would take out papers, and they have 30 days to return the papers. But after the end of 30 days, the election has to be held within 10 days. And that does not give this community an opportunity to vet any people who are running for election, nor does it give <coughs> any group in town the opportunity to hold an open forum or even for the media to be able to have candidates present anything. So I am not in favor of holding a special election. I think it should be in November with the regular election. 
Um, that's different than what I had read from Tody that she had provided us information with dates, and there was a date of August 14th that would be the election date, which gave us time for people to have the 30 days to get their signatures. They'd have time to campaign. They, we would have the ability to do a candidate's forum and fully vet the members. I know that it seems silly in some ways to say they'll be around for two months, but looking at where we are now, I wish I had an additional two months to get information from other members. I didn't take that time to get to know what I needed to have for information. I would want a potential candidate to have the time to talk with you, to talk with Mary, to understand your perspective. And you know, looking at just where we've been, I understand the time to heal, but you're asking four people to take on seven people's work right now. My son has forgotten who I am. Um, I would love to be able to do everything I can for the community, but also spend time with my family, my friends. Um, more importantly, I think it's a huge burden to ask two brand new members to induct five new members onto the board. I would love to have a chance for two people, maybe three, to be able to spend some time, get to know the process, and then bring in more people afterwards. I think it's fair to the community, it's fair to the po people running, and it's fair to the board. I, I'm really torn about this issue um, because I can see all of Leanne's points. Um, and I think that the idea of having at least four, if not five, new members all coming on in November is overwhelming. Um, on the other hand, I can see that, you know, certainly for one of the seats that would only last until November, yeah, I can see that that's a little silly to ask somebody to run for a two month term and then run again in November. So I am really torn about this one. Um, as far as my, I, 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 when you say I'm torn, that's exactly how I feel. I do have, um, you know, on a personal level, I definitely would like to have a full board. Um, but then I'm also um, concerned about, you know, having an election so soon with all of the acrimony of the past few months. And um, so, you know, my concerns are that, um, you know, with the different rules for the special election, I know you said that there could be a candidate tonight, but I know a lot of times with special elections, there aren't necessarily um, the candidates night. Um, and then I also think we are just at a crucial time in our town and we need time for the best candidates to step forward to serve our schools. And I do, I am concerned that, that those candidates might not be able to step forward in the summertime when, you know, a lot of folks interests are elsewhere. So that is, that is a concern for me that, that they might not be able to, you know, put that effort into running during a time when it isn't a normal time to run. Um, I also worry that elections can be, um, they can be acrimonious in, in themselves, that you know, it can be a battle. And, and I do think our town doesn't really need people saying, oh, I, I support this person, I support that person. And it just, it puts us, puts us in a tough place. And uh, so it's a, it's a hard decision. And like many decisions in um, government I've found is it's, there's never a slam dunk. It seems <laughs> there's always there's always some of this and some of that. And so whoever decides to run, that will that will be something they will find out too. But um, anyway, so um, but I but I do I do um, support waiting till November. But um, are we, is there any other discussion? Are we ready to vote? Um, you let me know those in favor of. Holding a special. Sorry, I just repeat your motion again. Oh yeah. I don't even remember. Um. <laughs> oh, but the motion was to hold a special election with a date to be determined, as set forward by town council. All those in favor? Yeah. <laughs> um, all those against? Opposed. Thank you. Uh, the next agenda item, 7.4, interlocal agreement and proposed budget for the Regional Service Center. Yes, so 
Earlier today, a document was shared with you. Um, this is the interlocal agreement for the regional service center application process that we are in. Um, so this, this document was prepared with legal counsel um, to form the regional service center, now titled the Greater Sebago Educational Alliance. Um, this allows us to have additional access to state funding. Um, for Scarborough, it brings about 40 plus thousand more dollars to our district by being a part of the regional <coughs> service center. Uh, there's several other districts that are involved in this Greater Sebago Education Alliance Regional Service Center. Since the last time I spoke with you, um, three or four new districts have joined. So then partnering members um, for the public is the Brunswick School Department, Cape Elizabeth School Department, Gorham Department of Education, public, uh, Portland Public Schools, Scarborough School Department, South Portland uh, Department of Education, West Fork School Department, also the... Um, MSAD number six, which is uh, uh, Bonnie Eagle, if I'm remembering correctly, Main School Administrative District number 15, Regional Service Unit number five, and Regional Service Unit number 14 are all part of the Greater Sebago Education Alliance. And this basically outlines our rules of governance. It talks about how we will bring in funding, how we will um, allocate the funding, and how um, what services we will partner in. And so our idea is to actually create a menu of services in order for districts to choose the services that are most um, pertinent to them, but it also allows for flexibility so that as our um, school districts and communities grow and evolve and change, there may be other services that we want to access. And uh, for the purpose of the application, we need to be engaged in at least two of those services. And so for Scarborough Public Schools, um, the two that uh, make the most sense for us at this time are our food service uh, co-op. So we're in a purchasing co-op with several other districts. We'll continue to do that. And then also um, we're looking at professional development. And those are two things that we've already done with the Sebago Alliance. So this is really just expanding it and bringing more um, really great thinkers together in a room to really focus on how do we get more money into the classrooms um, and streamlining some of our administrative services. And so tonight, um, I'm asking the board to take action to approve the interlocal agreement. And this enables us to move forward in the application process. It also enables other districts who might have this on their June um, referendums. Ours will be out, ours will be on the ballot in November. Move approval. Second. Uh, any discussion? Yeah. I just have oh. a question, so go ahead, Jackie. Uh, under number nine, functions, programs, and services, uh, you mentioned the two that we probably would be involved with would be the a and B, the purchasing and the professional development. Uh, under C, under recruiting, uh, we're not, we've done some recruiting with other school districts before. We're not going to participate in that? We are. We're going to continue to participate in that, so I misspoke. It is A, B, and C. Um, initially, we had this combined into two, and we separated okay. them out. So Joanne, along with some other colleagues, um, spearheads the sub fair that we do, and we're also looking at streamlining some of the mandatory trainings and things that we do. Now, when we do that, uh, are we competitive in paying our substitute teachers? Yes. yes. We we uh, raise the um, the uh, daily rate, and we also have now adjusted it so if it's a long-term sub, to a higher rate also. Great. Thank you very much. What happens to the um, agreement if it does not get approved by all the towns involved? <coughs> um, well, I, we have all superintendents have had the opportunity to edit um, and provide feedback on the interlocal agreement as it is being developed. And so, if we are not able to have either, we'll have to drop out of the agreement, um, and the others would move forward without us, or um, we could. And I assume with this, like, there's cost savings with sharing these. Absolutely. That's our anticipation. We've already experienced some cost savings from some of the um, grassroots, if you will, um, efforts that we've done with the joint food service purchasing and the um, sub fairs that we've done, and we're just trying to scale that up.
Um, so do we do we need a um, vote? Oh, yep. uh, when it comes down to the breakdown on, on disbursement of funds, it says that an executive director is going to receive 55% of direct state funding. Will, will the executive director uh, receive more funding? I think that's to be determined. We were actually thinking that for the first year we wouldn't hire an executive director as we're just sort of establishing protocols and procedures. Um, but the idea is that, you know, once we, this is really just a sample budget for the sake of the grant application and it would be refined as we go through. This is really. I'm, I'm just wondering who you could get not for so little money. Well, the, if I can just add in that uh, we've been working uh, with uh, two facilitators that have been provided through the state funding. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, any other questions or comments? Are we ready for a vote? All those in favor? Four and two. Thank you. On to agenda item 7.5, a Project Grace donation. So we weren't sure if Steffi Kopp would be able to join us here tonight, and we really would like her to be here when we accept that donation. Okay. So we would, I would ask the board chair if we could postpone that. Okay. Able to time certain, or table so that'll be tabled. Move to table. Okay. Second. Do we need a second for that? Oh, second. Yep. Okay. Do we need all those in favor of mm -hmm. tabling? Four and two. Um, agenda item 7.6, Scarborough High School programs, Program of Studies. Yes, so earlier this week, I believe you were, the link to the Program of Studies was shared with you all. This is something that as the school board, you're responsible for approving each year. I also shared with you this afternoon an update that came from the high school principal that rather than you reading through every line of it, could draw your attention to the areas where there have been some additions. Um, and where things have stayed the same. So tonight we would just ask that you approve the program of studies as prepared by the high school. Do we have a motion? So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion or questions? I'd say I'd like to take one of the classes, but we'll just <laughs> let that go. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, did you have anything? <laughs> What's, what's the smallest class in numbers that we have at the high school? In, in terms of course enrollment? Yes. So we're really looking at, um, depending on the department and the, the level of the course, um, the average class size for the upcoming school year will be anywhere from 16 to 20, 21 students. Some, of course, um, may have smaller numbers just based on interest and the newness of the program. Um, with the new schedule, the high school is trying to introduce some new electives that would um, that students would be able to choose as they have more options and flexibilities with the block schedule. But we, uh, the high school is still developing the, the schedule for next year. We'll have more concrete numbers in a couple of weeks, I would imagine. Do we have a minimum number of students needed to be enrolled in a class for the class to actually happen? So that really depends, I, I don't know if Sue would want to add, it depends on the, again, the newness of the course and the demand of the course. If it's a graduation requirement, sometimes we've run some courses that have as few as 10 students. Um, other times we've chosen not to run those courses if the numbers are low. It's all part of the, developing the master schedule and looking at that each year and analyzing what is the available staff that we have, what are the um, interests and demands of the students in terms of their enrollment requests, and then how can the high school put the puzzle of the schedule together to make it work, because that's not an easy job. So come October 1st, may we see a breakdown, Absolutely. an enrollment breakdown. For, it doesn't have to be detailed, just, you know, in English language arts, the average is this, and, I'm asked sometimes by people in the public, well, how many are in that class? Uh, 
I don't know. Thank you very much. Any other questions, comments? All right. Uh, all those in favor of moving forward with the Scarborough High School program says? Four and two. Uh, moving on to 7.7, .7, the second reading of the FY Knights 2019 school budget. Uh, I move approval of the FY 2019 education budget as presented at the school board's first reading on April 5th, 2018. Do I have a second? Second. second. Uh, and I'll introduce Leanne as the finance chair will introduce the amendment to the first reading proposal. And I'm going to apologize in advance because this is kind of a lot of numbers. Um, so this is the second reading of the vote for the fiscal year um, 19 education budget. Um, we did pass it at our first reading on April 5th of 2018. And during budget review in the following weeks, um, there were some updates that were brought forward to the school board and the town council outlining new cost information as reflected in tonight's handout. And I'm hoping everybody got a copy. Chairs. Okay. Um, on May 16th, the town council approved the full municipal budget um, following town council finance committee recommendation to keep the education portion of the budget equal to the amounts approved at their first reading. What that means is they took what we had come to them at first reading, they maintained that, and it was up to us to find areas to absorb the increases that affected our budget. Um, so in order to allow appropriate funding for those cost changes identified since the school board's first reading and respond to projected enrollment changes at K-12 while holding the education budget approved to the amounts at their original level, the Leadership Council and School Board um, recommend amending the original proposal for the school board approval as follows. And this is where the numbers get fun. Um, so we're going to make the following change to the general fund operating budget, adjust benefit accounts throughout the operating budget to reflect insurance changes since our first reading, increasing the total budget by $41,473. We're going to defer replacement of administrative laptops, um, reducing the IT equipment account by $41,473 for an equal offset. We're going to leave one full-time position open at the high school unfilled, um, reducing the salary and benefit accounts by $75,000, and based on enrollment position, um, enrollment numbers, add one full-time kindergarten or first grade teacher at Blue Point, um, and that increase is going to be a wash as well at $75,000. So we're amending the general fund expenditures budget for the final total of $48,526,504, which was the first reading total. Can I read them all at once? Mm -hmm. I want to make sure. Um, adult education budget. Increase the benefit account for the adult ed staff by $318 and reduce salary account for the instructors by $318. Again, leaving it as what we had at the first reading total of $188,501. For the school nutrition budget, increase benefit account for the school nutrition staff by $6,068 and reduce the food supplies budget by $1,068 and reduce equipment replacement budget by $5,000. The amended school nutrition expenditures budget will total $1,548,315, again equaling that first reading total. Are there any um, questions or comments on that before we? Was there a second for that? Oh, I think we did. I think no. I did a second already. Didn't Hillary do a second? No. I don't know. Oh, because oh, 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 that's the move. <laughs> okay, okay, that's, no. that's the move. Second. Thank you. No, that was the whole no, motion. Okay. That was my whole motion. No. Any yeah. questions, comments? No, I just want to say thank you to Leanne for leading us. It's, it's not easy this first time around, I'm sure. But, and thank you to all of those who participated, especially our administrators and our I don't want to say finance coordinator, and thank you for the town council for being supportive. And let's hope that those in the community will go out and vote yes, please, 
for our children's sake. I would agree, Kate. Thank you for everything that you've done. Um, this has been a lot to learn. I can't say thank you enough to everybody who has been supportive and helping get up to speed on this. And yes, please do vote. I agree that we need a summer of fun and sound and enjoy the beach. I just want to, so can I just clarify for myself and for anyone who's watching and not reading all of this? Um, so we had increase, an unexpected increase after the first reading because of um, uh, um, health insurance costs. Correct. And so this is rearranging the original mm -hmm. amount to, to absorb that cost. Correct. So we're not adding that cost onto the budget. Yep. Okay. Just completely absorbing it. And I believe that there will be a very nice one-sheeter for the folks at home that will be up on the budget portal explaining where all of those changes are and showing all of the numbers. So are we ready to um, vote on the amendment? All those in favor? One, two. So we've approved the general fund operating adult education and school nutrition budgets as amended. Um, uh, agenda item 8.0, uh, recognition. Move approval of the FY 2019 education budget as presented, as amended. As amended. Second. Okay. So our main motion is to improve the general fund operating adult education and school nutrition budgets as amended. So now we can vote on that main motion. All those in favor? Four and two. All right. Uh, on now on to uh, <laughs> agenda item 8.0 recognition. I'm actually going to ask um, our business manager Kate to come to the podium to talk about three really exciting recognitions that we have um, from this past month. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Bolton. I'm the business manager for Scarborough Schools. And uh, I, I really like talking about this kind of stuff because it's so heartwarming. I actually have two stories to tell. The, the third one I'm holding off on because we haven't really finished our conversation with that particular citizen. Um, but we've had two really nice stories of support for our school district um, from longtime members of our community. Uh, the first one is a former colleague of mine, Ed Damon. Uh, Ed was a custodian at the Wentworth School for years and years. Um, he actually retired and thought that retirement meant you need to go take another job. So he came to work with us after he left Dusty Warren. And uh, Ed passed away in March. And when his uh, funeral came around and his obituary came around, his wife called us up and said, hey, do you think that in lieu of flowers we could have folks give money to the school department instead? And I said, yeah, that's a good idea. Um, one of the stories that we heard from our school lunch program was that Ed was in the habit of coming into the lunch program on the quiet, not talking to anybody, but just handing over some money out of his wallet to pay off the bills for kids who couldn't afford their school lunch or whose account was overdrawn. Um, he did that while he was alive, and he did it again while he was dead. Um, his family not only put that in the obituary so that we got a number of, of very nice checks and cards from people in the community recognizing Ed, but we also uh, had the surprise of a check for $2,000 from the Damon family. And uh, they came in with that in hand and said that they wanted to give some of Ed's legacy directly to us as well. Um, so tonight we're going to ask that you accept that donation uh, and I'm sure that will be a pleasure for all of us. I'm a little sad because I missed it. 
we have another legacy, I think, that, that's uh, similarly touching. We have a longtime Scarborough resident named Betty Hart. And a lot of you may remember from your own childhood, if you're Scarborough folks, Betty founded the Pied Piper Nursery School uh, at the Black Point Congregational Church about 40 years ago. And so she has touched so many lives in this community of little kids who were um, nurtured and made ready for the Scarborough schools by that program. And uh, when Betty passed away in April, the current owner of Pied Piper, whose name is Vicki Ware, and she's also a Scarborough parent, you might recognize her name and her kid's name, she reached out to us uh, and asked whether they could establish a scholarship in Betty's name. And so uh, we worked it out with them that a high school senior is going to receive a $500 scholarship this year. Uh, and uh, the only prerequisite is that the child or the student was a Pied Piper kid. <laughs> and so the, the wish is that that student might write a little letter and say, hey, this is how my early years at Pied Piper prepared me for my wonderful adult life that I'm having right now. Um, so we've set that up. We've received the first $500 from Mrs. Ware, and we're going to uh, have that going forward. The college placement office is working with us and with her on that. And again, we'd like to accept that as a, as a donation in an ongoing way. Oh, thank you. Thank You're you, welcome. Kate. Those are wonderful stories about, I, I, think, I, might, I think my son remembers, I, I think I remember him talking about Ed at, the, at Wentworth, so. Yeah, Ed, Ed saved a lot of kids out of, <laughs> kept them out of trouble, retainers out of the trash. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. <laughs> I think, did he used to let the kids wear the gloves and help clean the tables and things? Sometimes yeah. he let them help, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah my son thought that was the best. Classic Tom Sawyer, yeah. right? Yeah. <laughs> Here you go, kid, yeah. <laughs> try it out. Yeah. yeah. Um, any questions about that? or? No, those are just such heartwarming stories, and I'm so happy that you brought them to our attention. And um, the first, the first one is um, is lovely, and I. But the second one, my daughter had Mrs. Hart, so oh, yeah. um, that's really nice. That's really cool. So when your daughter's a senior. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kate. <clears throat> so we will table um, accepting the donations till the next meeting. Um, do I need to? No, okay. Uh, Question? Oh, yeah. Is there some way that, that we can put a plaque somewhere in one of our buildings for each of these folks just to recognize their generosity? I think that's a wonderful idea. They certainly have had an impact on our youngsters. Yeah, and we, we can talk about that. We get a lot of requests to do things like that, and so we like to coordinate where they go and, and what schools mm -hmm. we place them. Absolutely. So we'll report back to the board and let you know what the decision is. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, agenda item 9.0, superintendent's report. Just a quick report this evening. I wanted to remind everyone of the, um, I keep saying the vaping event, but this is an informational event. There won't be vaping at the event. Um, it's this Thursday, the 31st, from 5 to 6.30 at the Scarborough, Scarborough High School Auditorium. And I believe I saw Tina Pettengill here, maybe in the hallway. Um, we're partnering with the main, um, we're, we're partnering with Maine Med to, or Maine Health, rather, to bring this event to Scarborough. As you know, if you have a teen, know a teen, know someone who's almost a teen, there's um, a lot going on in terms of marketing and targeting our teens around vaping and jeweling and what this means and the implications that it has on our students. And this is an event we would like to invite all families to come to. Um, even if your child is in primary school, it's never too early to start learning about these things. Um, and we, I think earlier today when we met, we had 72 people registered so far. Um, it does help if you pre-register for the event. It also will help us send some follow-up information and communications to you. So um, tell a friend if you have a middle school or high school student, um, you could certainly bring them to the event with you so that you're learning alongside each other and hoping that um, many of our, st our staff will be able to attend as well because this is one of those things that um, is, is very trending and hard to detect. 
Um, today I learned about vaping, like clothing that you can wear, and it looks like you're just kind of like chewing on the string of a hoodie, but you're actually vaping. Um, that was a new one that I learned about today. So there's all kinds of things for us to be learning about and information to be gathering so we can support our students at, in their development. And again, if you can pre-register, that is preferred. It's a free event here at Scarborough High School in the auditorium. The other um, piece of news, we want to celebrate all of our grants this um, cycle have been fully funded. We had two grant applicants through the Scarborough Education Foundation. Um, one at, uh, that will support our math work that we've been doing, and this is really a um, once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for us to be able to bring Dr. Yeep Ben Har, if I'm saying that correctly, to our district this summer, I believe, and we'll be doing some um, speaking events for staff, but also uh, there's a parent event as well. And we want to thank Peggy Clements and Jim Marshall, two of our math instructional coaches, for taking the lead and applying for that grant. And of course, thank Seth for fully funding that. Um, this is not something that we would be able to do within our operating budget. So Scarborough um, Ed Foundation really is filling a massive gap for us with this. And then also at Eight Corners, um, Kate Anderson has earned a grant around mindful teachers and mindful schools. Many of our educators have um, taken the opportunity through their professional learning teams and otherwise to educate themselves around mindfulness and how that can support students and adults um, in their development and in managing various aspects of, of student life and home life. And so we're thankful that she will be able to continue her pursuit in learning more about mindfulness. Um, and again, just want to thank the Scarborough Ed Foundation. I think um, last year was the biggest grant cycle that they had had, and um, they've funded our school district with over um, 100, and I think this brings us up to like 70 some thousand dollars worth of innovation grants across the district K-12. So thank you to Scarborough Ed. And then our enrollments, um, our enrollment numbers are currently at 2,916 as of last year as of the beginning of May. Um, I didn't bring a detailed report today because I did report on that in the beginning of the month. Um, but I did want to bring our community's attention to our growing K-2 numbers. Uh, the adjustments that you saw in the budget today are a result of that. We already are exceeding expectations based on the new housing model enrollment numbers. So if you've heard me talking about enrollment, I'm always talking about these long range projections. And we've so far been pretty much right on track we knew that this was going to be a big year for our incoming K, and our K-2 principals are reporting that enrollment is exceeding those expectations. And so we, were, um, we would be looking at class sizes of, of as high as 20 to um, as high as 23 in some of our K-2 classes. However, the two positions that are in this budget that you all approved tonight will help us ensure that those class sizes stay more in appropriate ranges um, by allowing us to bring on two additional K-2 members to support those needs both at Pleasant Hill and at Blue Point. We will continue to monitor enrollment. Um, this is a question that I know I have been receiving a lot from parents really inquiring about um, what we were going to do around the K-2 numbers. And so I just want to thank the Leadership Council for their work today um, and the time you put into really being thoughtful and prioritizing our needs across the district in order to make those decisions. Do any, any uh, questions or comments? Um, again, SEF has always been such a supporter, and I know it's, you know, we appreciate everything that they do for the schools. They've done a great, great deal. Um, so 10.0 is the chair's report. Um, I want to thank my fellow board members for their confidence in my abilities to do this, and I promise that I will get better at this. <laughs> <laughs> a little rocky tonight. Uh, don't have the uh, aplomb of my, my previous board chairs, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say that I do miss um, the members that are not here any longer. And uh, But I know as a board um, of four, we plan to continue to do what we have always done and to put the kids' needs first. And, and we know we have um, leadership and teachers who are working hard to, to make um, to make sure that our kids' needs are taken care of and are provided the best education. And so I look to um, ask you know, our community to really give 
have some patience with, with our new board and hope that we will can find ways to work together and to, um, to find some understanding and find ways to reconnect because I know our community has, has gotten divided in many ways and so I, um, I know as a board that's something in the future we're going to be looking at ways we can, we can all work together and, and I, know that, I know that all of us you know, want our town to be united and want our town to, to feel better again. So, so I really hope that we can, we can find, find ways to work together. So, um, on to 11.0 um, committee reports. Um, Leanne, do you have anything with finance, or is that not really? No, okay, is that no, okay? <laughs> we had okay. a good update. Okay, um, and uh, communications. Well, I am. I mean, we yeah. don't really have a communications yeah. committee. Um, we've been working a little bit on um, replying to emails, and uh, I mean, yeah, there's not much. And then I'm chair of policy right now. And with policy, I was unable to attend the last meeting, but Leanne led the meeting, and um, they did speak about um, a suicide awareness program policy. Um, we, don't, we do not currently have a policy, um, and there's not an optional policy from Drum Drummond Woodsum, who is our attorneys. Um, and, uh, Julie's going to work with Melissa Huey, one of our attorneys, um, to review our suicide risk and abuse and neglect and bullying, harassment, and cyberbullying procedures, um, and ask for some recommendations. Uh, we're also planning in the future to have a board training with our staff for suicide awareness in the fall, which will include the reporting matrix that's currently in place for staff. And the board will follow this matrix as well, even though that's not a requirement. Um, we need to schedule a um, a policy meeting and that will be scheduled soon and you'll be able to find that out on the website. Um, that's it for policy. Jackie, negotiations? Yes, I'm happy to report that uh, it, it appears we have signed uh, TA, the contract with uh, custodians and cafeteria workers. Uh, that contract is being presented to them or was presented to them today uh, for verification, and they, I think they have a certain number of days in which to verify, and it'll be on our agenda, next agenda here for the board to approve that. And uh, I think we did that in what, four, four meetings. meetings? It was really pleasant. We had a, we had a lot of fun, quite frankly, mm -hmm. and a nice, nice group of people negotiating for the cafeteria workers and the custodians. Uh, there was an MS Maine School Boards Association meeting uh, on, uh, I think it was the 19th, but I was away, so was unable to attend. But I want to bring something to us that uh, I found out about through Maine School Boards, and perhaps we would want to put it on an agenda. There are two school districts who have representatives on that board who have requested of parents over the years that if they want to leave the money in the account for, for food for the cafeteria, instead of the school district sending them a rebate, that money can be put towards the deficit on, for students who are unable to pay. And they've been quite successful in, in achieving funds to reduce their deficit. There are school districts like we are who never refuse a student a meal. So it's something I think we might think about, and I have a feeling that our parents, many of our parents would support that. Are you talking about at the end of the year, Jackie, or yes. at the end of their career? No, at the end of the, end of the school year, and okay. I think we do we rebate the money that's left in their accounts? No. no, no, just no keeps, it just keeps going. going. It rolls over it rolls to the next year. rolled over? Year. Yeah. Well, these two school districts, uh, I know, evidently do a rebate, but they s suggest to parents that they give it to the school nutrition program for those children. 
something we might explore. Thank you. Thank you. All right. I think is was there any other? There, I'd like to talk about the business partnership. Oh, thank you, business partnership. Um, and I would like to thank Christy Zavaznik for all the work that she's done with this, because um, the two items I want to highlight are the career day events that happened at South Portland High School. Um, Sixty of our sophomores were able to go over, met with 75 different businesses and organizations, and it was a great opportunity. Huge partnership um, with a neighboring district, and it's giving those students an opportunity to see the types of careers that are out there and maybe help form formulate where they want to go, whether it's in their future, in their summers, but it's a great opportunity. And the big one is, I can't wait till tomorrow. Um, I get to attend one of the exhibition reports for the internship program as our seniors are reporting out on the internships that they've had this semester. I've heard that from people who have been, those have been fantastic report outs. I can't wait. Um, and if my employers are listening, please don't pay attention to that. Um, <laughs> but I look forward to seeing them tomorrow. So. Great, thank you. Them. Thank you. Wonderful work there. Thanks so much. Uh, I think that's it for committee reports. So moving on to 12.0 student representative reports. I'm excited. So I'm going to start off with introducing uh, Sarah Gentile. She recently just finished a mural in the, right in the entrance of the art wing at the high school. And so if you wouldn't mind, Sarah, I just invited her to talk a little bit about this. I thought this was kind of interesting. Yes. So, my <laughs> so do you want to talk, talk a little bit? About it? Yeah, go ahead. So um, I started it. March 16th, and I just finished it about one or two weeks ago. Um, I was told that I should probably talk about what inspired me to do it. Uh, I pretty much just thought that I didn't want to do something necessarily Red Storm related because I wanted anyone to be able to appreciate it. And so I wanted to make something fun that whenever people saw it, they just smiled and it made their day better. So I decided, why not an octopus? <laughs> 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 it's lovely. It's beautiful. Thank you. It's, it's amazing. amazing. I, I can't believe you did it that fast. Wow. Mm -hmm. Sarah, what is the uh, octopus's name? His name is Oswald. <laughs> <laughs> and then she also painted the whale that you see when you walk into the high school, right above the uh -huh. entrance to well, where you're heading to the auditorium. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. to mention that uh, I wouldn't have been able to do this mural if it wasn't for my art teacher, Miss Landry Fowler. Uh, she was the one who actually wanted me to do a mural because she's been my art teacher for all four years of my high school career. And my sister, who's two years older than me, and she's just made a massive difference in both of our lives. And so I wanted to thank her too. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any other questions? No. Do you have time to do another one before the end of the Not quite with two days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one. Well, thank you, Sarah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And following the whole art theme, Thomas, did you want to speak about that? Uh, yeah. So at the uh, high school, between May 7th and May 10th, we had a Scarborough Public Schools art show. And you can see some of the magnificent works of art, including uh, one that I did for my photography class. I'm kind of smirking because it's the one on the left, and I did it as kind of a joke. Um, uh, for anyone who doesn't recognize it, it's a reference to SpongeBob. Um, um, and on the, in the center and the right, you can see some far superior <laughs> uh, works. Um, and I, I just like to say that uh, I think it's amazing that uh, uh, the art teachers and the uh, school system got together to make this a thing again. Because I remember for all of middle school, pretty much, and almost all of uh, high school up until this year, it wasn't a thing anymore. And to have it be brought back, um, I think it's amazing that so many put, people put a lot of effort into bringing it back and allow people to uh, 
show their varying degrees of artistic uh, <laughs> talent. So. Uh, we also had the SHS Chorus Concert. Um, I believe th this is the last one of the year, correct? Yes. Yeah, this is the last one of the year. Um, and it's especially significant because besides graduation, this is really the last time uh, you'll get to hear the, sen the seniors uh, sing, uh, which I think is extraordinary. In terms of music between this and the band uh, pop concert, there was, um, for the chorus concert, uh, Africa by Toto, I believe, um, and Beatles medley. Um, I can't remember exactly what was in there. Um, at the pop concert, there was um, music from Moana, from Aladdin, and uh, Harry Potter. So far more poppy type music, uh, definitely inspired by what the students want. And I think that's what makes these uh, end of the year concerts uh, great. And then I know we've already had one this year, but there was another blood drive hosted by Key Club um, early at the beginning of May, I believe. And I just wanted to give a shout out to Cameron Jury who organized that whole uh, event. I believe she did that within like a month. So it was pretty good. I don't know the exact amount of pints they got overall, but I do remember that she filled almost every slot on the page. Um, so I just wanted to kind of recognize her for that. And then for anyone who was there yesterday, Memorial Day Parade featured uh, our high school band and the Jim Dandies. So they did a great job. Uh, prom happened. You wanna talk about that? Uh, I wasn't at prom uh, for this year, but uh, from what I heard uh, other people say, uh, it was nice because if you weren't too interested in dancing, they had other, um, they, they had other facilities like uh, pool and foosball, which you can see in the picture on the left. So uh, more uh, more things going on uh, for people who may not be too interested in loud music or dancing. And I mean, I probably shouldn't be this excited about silverware, but I am so excited <laughs> about the new silverware over at Wentworth. Um, I kind of headed the committee in Ecos that got this in there, and we spent two weeks over at their, each of their lunches kind of introducing the whole program and talking to the students about it. It was a huge success, and from what I've heard, we haven't lost too much silverware. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you might notice that, and I believe our goal next year is to try and spread it as far across the district as we can. So, yeah, so it's really exciting. <laughs> so Dylan, and just in case people didn't know, so before at Wentworth they used plastic, correct? Yes. And then you, through Ecos, you mm -hmm. introduced this so wonderful. Reusable mm -hmm. utensils. Yep. And, I, and I've heard about the utensils at Wentworth for, from my own kids. Um, they're very excited about it. <laughs> <laughs> It's an exciting yeah, time. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then over at the middle school, they had their Oklahoma theater show. I did not attend, but it, from the photos, it looks really entertaining. It was, it was, it was great. great. It was? It was, it was wonderful. Good. Okay, so well, that's great. Uh, I, I would say, and I will have to say that probably 100% of the people there sang better than I ever could. <laughs> so. You do well. <laughs> okay, and then the Red Storm Strikes Out Cancer walk. Uh, I remember this, I drove by this uh, a couple weeks ago when they were having it, and I emailed Mr. Bennett afterwards, and I was like, hey, how much money did you raise? He said they raised over $5,000 for this wow. one walk. 52? Oh, wow. Well, at the time, it was 5000 <laughs> So it's a lot better. It's still coming in, I know. It's, I wish I could raise that much money. <laughs> make, make events a lot easier. Um, and then... Oh, no, it's, that wasn't in there. Okay. Um, well, Ace's Day happened. I actually walked with Julie at this event. Um, 
this was the last day we had introduced the silverware to Wentworth, and I was walking out, and everyone else was walking with me, so I decided to go to the track. Um, this was, I don't know too much about it, but this was a, like, specific time dedicated to getting students outside and exercising. It was a gorgeous day. It was, like, one of those first, like, really hot days. Um, so as you can see, it was a beautiful day. We walked right around the track. Um... Let's see. The Jim Dandy's performance happened on April 7th. I did not attend that either, but it, as always, from what I've heard, it was phenomenal. I still can't unicycle, but <laughs> I tried. I, I'm, um, I'm a bit out of practice. <laughs> but they're so much more coordinated than I can ever be. Um, and then let's see. The Steam Fair happened last week. Yeah, last week. That was really cool. I got to volunteer at the making uh, bouncy balls. That was a little bit stressful, but it was really cool. <laughs> After we cleaned everything up, I saw lots of people walking out with their bouncing their balls down the hall. Um, there was all sorts of different activities revolving around science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. Um, and I just thought that was a really cool opportunity. I, for the first time, saw the virtual reality goggles that we have at, in the district. I didn't know we had those. Those are really cool. I'm jealous. Uh, and then, let's see. I had a slide about Wellness Day, but I guess it didn't update in there. Wellness Day happened the Thursday before we left for um, Memorial Break. I got to attend, and I always miss those days because that was always like my favorite day of the year. Um, from what I've heard from all the students, it was a huge success, and they had a lot of fun. I got to see all sorts of art programs and different technology programs and just activities for students to get outside. I got photos of different field trips they took. Um, the ones I was going to show you were of a field trip to the salt pump. And that's just about it for me. I don't know if you have anything else to add, Thomas. Um, uh, just regarding um, AP exams. Um, uh, in terms of AP exams, uh, I was shocked with the attendance, especially with uh, particular specific um, exams like uh, calculus and psych psychology. I, I felt like the attendance for our AP exams is extraordinary. And uh, it just goes to show that, um, you know, Scarborough really wants uh, students to succeed uh, in terms of education. And I think it's uh, good um, for the long run, especially with college. So th that's something that I definitely just wanted, an observation that I definitely wanted to share. What about upcoming dates for graduation exercises? Mm, um, exercises, I can't give the specific times, but... Um, <laughs> Next Tuesday. Yeah. At six. Oh, oh yeah, the awards night. Okay, yeah, Tuesday six, senior awards night. Uh, that's when uh, people will be recognized for scholarships. Okay, at Wednesday, uh, Wednesday seven thirty will be baccalaureate, and that will be at uh, Saint Max. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's not school sponsored. But that, that is not school sponsored. Right. School sponsored. However. Uh, it is very widely attended, um, and graduation itself is on the 9th, 10th, uh, sorry, <laughs> excuse me, excuse, at 7, excuse me, that's what I meant to say, but um, uh, I have World Scholars Cup like the day before, so it's very jumbled for me right now. Yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, so graduation is on the 10th, um, and other than that, I, uh, is there anything? You're in a zone. <laughs> is, is there anything the else? Oh, yeah, at the Cross Insurance Arena. Um, besides that, um, uh, if, if your family hasn't already gotten tickets, then it's strongly recommended that you do get tickets for that. <laughs> uh, 
I think I've covered everything, right? Yeah, all right. <laughs> Except for one thing. Will you be at the June 7th board meeting? Uh, yeah, yes I will. I will, very likely. So. Okay, well, you, if you're making that promise, we're gonna hold you to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I wanna commend you too, especially Dylan. I know he goes to great lengths to make these presentations, yeah, they're, and they're wonderful. They are wonderful. Thank you. It's really nice to see everything going on. All right. Um, any any other comments? Um, we on to thirteen point oh appointment. Yes, there is one appointment this evening. Uh, the high school spring coach um, for the assistant girls lacrosse coach. I would ask the board to approve it as printed. Move approval as printed. Second. <clears throat> any uh, comments or questions? I will note that was um, a booster funded position, so that's something that the bo our booster groups who support our schools so with such uh, such zeal and, and really really help our schools so much that um, really helps us out. So um, all in favor? Four and two. Uh, agenda item fourteen point oh adjournment. So moved. Second. All in favor? Four and two. Nice job, Mary. I was I'll definitely do it next year, yeah. Unless they give a special speech.